Hello, everyone. Today is Thursday, December 17, 2015, and this is the week in charts. Brought to you by WebinarSoon.com. There's a webinar soon. There's a disclaimer screen, and let me just sum it up. All predictions are about the future, and a lot of stuff can happen between now and then. Uh, quick announcements uh, once again. Uh, in case I forget, I think it's in the next slide, but uh, this will be my last show for the year. It just kind of dawned on me this morning. Uh, next week we have Christmas, and uh, Christmas Eve will be next Thursday. So I'm going to go ahead and take that off. And then the following week is in between New Year's, and it's going to be New Year's Eve, so might as well take that off too. So we'll start fresh uh, next year. Um, if you are interested in following along with my service, I have the Foresight and Hindsight Edition. And this is in the sidebar of my website. The blog is over here. I hate that word blog. I usually call it my column, but my column's over here. And then the uh, the sidebar here has all the announcements and a bunch of other stuff in here. Some of it's a little dated, needs some updating, and I'm working on all that. All right, uh, what do we talk about? Um, well, this morning I was kind of thinking there's not a whole lot of great lessons out there that, that came up over the last week or so. Just the market's been kind of chopping around. So let's stick with the charts, especially since we could be at a crucial juncture. And one thing I did think about a little bit today is that you don't necessarily want to to blindly follow some sort of adage like don't fight the Fed because it's kind of interesting that yesterday is like don't fight the Fed. But then, well, by not by fighting the Fed, the market actually went up. So and I'm going to flesh that out when we get to the charts. Uh, when we get when we do get to the actual charts outside of the slides uh, if you do the show, uh, all I ask is that you could ask about as many stocks as you want, but if you don't mind, just put uh, one symbol per line, and we'll get. I'll open it up for uh, stock picks in a few minutes. So we should have plenty enough time. So if there's any f questions that you may have or anything, uh, feel free to ask as we go. So let's get back to the uh, charts. And one thing that I was uh, talking about uh, last week is that the the buy and hope may be coming to an end. And we start in 2009. I had another chart, too, that's missing. Um, it might not. Yeah, let's just not pull it up. Well, I wanted to show you, and I'll show you when we get to the actual charts. And the reason I want to show you the monthly was in the actual, in the daily charts, uh, we haven't made any forward progress in a year. And depending on what time of day it is and what the market's doing, obviously, we're actually negative for the year. We're slightly positive this morning, uh, I noticed. But some of that has already evaporated. And then I wanted to show you the monthly. We'll get to the daily here in just one second. But on a, on a monthly chart, you can see that each bar is a month. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. So that's quite a long time, 16 months, without much forward progress. And one thing you have to be careful with, and, and this is why – Last week, I drew the curved arrow look like this with the trim. But one thing you have to be careful with is you do see this big blue arrow, and that should really jump out at you on the chart, okay? But you also have to pay attention to what's going on a little shorter term. So shorter term, you, you kind of have this action. So it's not quite as impressive if you're just looking at the net net change over since 2009. By the way, that, that change, um, if you don't know anything about charts and technical analysis, if you're just getting started, that's the first thing you should study. Where's the market now? Where was the market yesterday, a month ago, two months ago, three months ago, 16 months ago, okay? And that's a very important concept, and it's almost amazing how simple that concept is and how that can generally keep you on the right side of the market if it's going higher, lower, or sideways. My concern, as I've been saying quite a bit, is that the buy and hope crowd, obviously this is a, a joke on hold, if I could spell it, hold, okay, you get the idea. It seems like a new crop comes along every few years. So the market started go up, going up in 2009, it kept going up, going up, and then the buy and hold people or rewarded for just sitting on their hands and, and staying long stocks. And that'll work until they don't. Obviously, you get a year like 2007, 2008, where the market loses 50% of its value, or 2000 and, 
2000 even that is where it lost 40 something percent of its value and then you know obviously you can go back into the 30s where the market loses 80 percent of its value and i think it took uh as i wrote in layman's was it uh 30 years 25 30 years i mean i used to get laughed at at cocktail parties if i'd say the market go 25 years or more without going up and by going up i mean making new highs and people used to laugh at me, laugh in my face. So now I just, as I wrote in layman's, in the layman's guide to trading stocks, now I just enjoy my drink and, and uh, I just kind of listen along and try not to check. Well, I'm I'm kind of assy. I, I do kind of chime in, but I try to avoid market talk at all costs with the, with the amateurs like that, because people believe that markets go up and markets go down. But when you tell them that it might be going down, they they get really excited. And they tell you why it won't go down and blah, blah, blah. But anyway, and I hope it keeps going up. I hope this uh, remains in place for a long, long time. Hopefully the next 20, 30, 40 years. That will be fine with me. I'm, I'm, Believe me, I don't like bear markets. But as a trader, I just I have to play the hand that's dealt. Anyway, so obviously the trend has slowed a little bit in here. And we haven't made a whole lot of forward progress. One thing I did want to talk about a little bit, I didn't really think it was going to be my last show until I started looking at the calendar. But 2015 has been a real year for patience. In fact, here we go. We've got the – we sort of see it here. This is a weekly chart. And you can see that the whole year the market has just sort of meandered back and forth. It looked like it was a pretty obvious sell-off. Then it bounced right back. So, again, come back to the net, net change, and you can see we haven't made a whole lot of forward progress in a long time. We'll take a look at the daily in just one second. But one thing I was thinking about when I realized that this would be my last show – is that this was really a year for patience and being selective. And if I had to say what's the secret to trading other than, of course, proper money position management and psychology, the ability to not only plan your trade but follow your plan, but if I had to say what the secret was without getting into those quote-unquote secrets, I would say the secret is patience and being selective. And – I really got to thinking this year that's that's been very much true. But even in good markets, that's still very true. Because in great markets, I see people start to get a little sloppy and they start taking more and more mediocre setups. And they begin they pay off still because let's say you had a rip roaring uptrend like nineteen ninety nine, that even the crappy stocks are gonna just go up and all the crappy setups I should say. Unfortunately, that creates this sloppy behavior. So even if conditions are great, I would still focus on being as selective as possible and being patient, being patient by waiting for that entry, being patient for waiting, waiting for new setups when none are there and not trying to invent trades, to quote my friend Peter Marthy, don't invent trades. And the reason I'm thinking about all this is just right before the show, I've got a few really nice emails from some clients, and, and I'm very excited that that they're like, hey, Dave, I get it. And, and some of the same clients earlier in the year were like, come on, man. We, there's got to be something to do. And I'm like, nope, there's nothing to do. And that's one thing that I have to be very careful about. I mean, there's a huge amount of advantage of me doing what I do publicly because it forces me to want to be better. And it forces me to, to make sure I'm very, very selective. But on the downside, there is a little pressure out there for me to produce product to invent the trades. And I have to avoid that pressure and just stick to my guns. And then I know in the long run, everything will be fine. Those who can't be patient and are craving action will go off to chase rainbows, and that's fine. And then at the end of the year, those who toughed it out during less than ideal conditions are going to do just fine in the future. So anyway, not to go on and on on that. Now, one thing I wanted to show you today, and, and just reemphasize the point, I say this quite a bit, so those of you who have heard me say it before, just bear with me. But when a market makes an all-time high, and then you get some sort of emerging trend pattern, and a bow tie is probably the best one to look for, Certainly for example purposes, the bow ties are uh, the best one to look for because it's so easy to recognize. I don't want to say it's quantifiable, and I wouldn't want to quantify it. 
But it is pretty obvious and easy to recognize. And we did have the weekly bow tie here in the S&P. But once you have the, the bow tie, and once you have the trigger on that, and the bow tie is just when the three moving averages come together, cross over over a short period of time, given the appearance of a bow tie, okay, and then you have a at least a one-bar pullback. That's your actual setup. Then as long as that top remains in place, I'm sorry, as long as the high is not taken out, the major high, so step one, and I'm going to show you all the steps here in just one second for catching tops and bottoms. But up here, that's your major high. Until and unless that major high is taken out, that major signal remains in place. Now, uh, we'll get to that in one second, uh, David. Hang in there. Uh, let's say you have a top. It looks like this. And then you have a turn up. And then you have continuation of the trend. And let's say you get down here at 10-year lows. And then you have a bottom. It starts turning up again. This signal off of major or five-year or 10-year highs is a major signal because it's coming off of those great uh, longer term highs and that this is a major signal because it's coming off these long term lows now if you do have like a little signal in between then this is going to be what I call a minor signal and this might be very tradable and there's some bloggers out there that are quick to point out these minor signals I don't know if they actually realize that the, that's not really the author's intent. That's not the, uh, the design of the bow tie. The design of the bow tie is to catch major tops and major bottoms. I guess catch is a, a bad word because you're not supposed to be catching them. But for lack of a better word, that's what the that's what the my intent was for, not for the zigs and the zags. But yes, we could see a what I would call a minor signal in here really soon, a minor buy signal. But for now. The top remains in place as long as this high is not taken out. Now, what's pretty amazing, and if you go back and look at prior shows, I've showed this quite a bit. And whenever I do a presentation on bow ties, like I did just yesterday, I don't know uh, if the recording is going to be available for that, but I was doing it for uh, London Investment Week. They do the round the clock trader once a month, and I was uh, their guest yesterday, or day before, I think. But when you have a market like, take a look at gold, bonds, any major bull or bear market over the last 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, or 100 years, whatever you want to look at, when you have that, that bow tie or emerging trend signal, that top or that bottom remains in place until that top, meaning the highs, or bottom, meaning the lows, gets taken out. And that's a really cool thing to look at. Now, for you more more active people, this could be an hourly chart. This could be a five-minute chart, okay? But if you are trading hourlies or five minutes, just make sure that this five-minute high is a multi-day high or at least a multi-hour high or, you know, the more the better. The reason you want this to be a major high, if you're looking to sell short, is because the most amount of people are going to be trapped on the wrong side of the market. Back the chart up one or back the slide up one. And if you have a sell signal somewhere in here, well, you might not have a whole lot of people long. But when it's coming off of these all-time highs, everybody is happy who's ever owned stocks, except maybe this guy right here who bought the exact high. Or up here, somewhere in here, you get the idea. But when those stocks begin to sell off from those highs, you get a lot of unhappy people. So at this level here, obviously anybody who bought from here on up is at a losing trade. And as the market begins to drop more and more, you have more and more people who are now losing, and that puts more and more pressure on those people. And people buy and sell for a variety of reasons, as uh, Tom McClellan's uh, mother, Marion, once said. Some people buy when they have money. Some people sell when they need money and others use four more sophisticated methods but you got to realize that if you're looking to retire or if your kids going to college or you need to buy a house or you you accidentally slipped and stuck something where it shouldn't have been stuck 
and now you're faced with a divorce and you you know you need to get rid of half your money or you can lose half your money then you're going to be forced to sell and as the market drops because you're going to have less and less money you're going to be forced it's going to be it's going to be harder and harder for you to stay with that position so from a psychological standpoint beginning to lose money can be quite difficult especially when you need the money that you're losing and and let's be frank here don't we all need as much money as possible the question under the moving averages um if you download the free report on my website right now this, today there should be a banner ad up on my website and if not you can't find it just go to store uh davelandry.com slash store and the first item in the store is free i know i give it away i give it away i give away these free reports uh, I give them away for free, but I make it up in volume, okay? <laughs> Reminds me of the old internet model. But uh, just real quick, just to, without going into the too much details, this is a 10-day simple moving average, and then these two are exponential, and this is a 20 and a 30 exponential. And don't worry about the math, uh, but one thing that's kind of cool, which I learned from uh, Greg Morris, who I'll be seeing here recently. He's going to stop by and visit. Um, but one thing I learned from him is that as soon as the market crosses below that moving average, the moving average will turn on the uh, exponential moving average. So that's kind of cool. I like the 10-day simple or 10-period simple because it gives me a true representation of price over the last two weeks. But for the longer-term moving averages, I like to use the uh, exponential ones. Um, so one thing I was thinking about this morning is uh, big days, major top and bottom catcher in six easy steps. Step one would be to wait for a bow tie. I'm sorry. Step one B. Let me just read my own slide here. Wait for a major high or a low. So you go back to like the S&P. The reason I'm using the S&P from 2007 is just in, just in case we're in that major bull market thing now. I don't want to be the guy that comes on hindsight who says um, – Hey, look, it's a, it's, a, it's a bear market, you know. <laughs> I want to make sure I show you everything going in. So step one would be wait for a major high. If you're trading five-minute charts, I would be in a five-minute chart. If you're trading hourly charts, I'd be in an hourly, hourly chart, and then it, and so on and so forth. But just make sure it's a major high or low. In this particular case, this is an all-time high in 2007. And then the next step would be you want to wait for the bow tie setup. Now, the bow tie setup is two things. Oh, by the way, uh, in case I forget to say it because uh, somebody was asking me, I think David was asking me about uh, moving averages. Uh, I also like to put a 50-day simple on the chart. And the reason I do that is because I like to look at the inflection of the bow tie into the 50. And it's also well watched. The 50-day moving average is also well watched. And when you go to a weekly chart, obviously that's a 50 period moving average, which is 250 days on the weekly. Do the math and it'll, it'll make sense. Um, the other thing I noticed recently, I don't want to digress too far, but just paying attention to the slope of that 50 day moving average, 50 week moving average, I should say, can help to keep you on the right side of the market. Notice that it was positive for a long, 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 long time. Turned slightly negative here and now it's just kind of meandering around mostly sideways okay so when it when a 50 day 50 week i'm sorry moving average is going up you want to be mostly long when it's going down you want to be or sideways you want to be either flat or short and that's you know i'm all proud of my bow ties because they catch these major tops and bottoms it helps to keep you on the right side of the market but something as simple as a 50 week moving average could also do a pretty good job of that be careful with moving averages, obviously, because there will be some lag to them. Anyway, so after we wait for a major high or low, we look for the bow tie setup. Now, the bow tie setup is, one, the crossing, and, two, a higher high and a higher low. Step three would be to trade the bow tie, okay? Once it triggers – Take the trade. Step four would be put a stop in above the high. Now, if you're a trader, you're trading, unless you're trading a very small position, that, that could be hard to do. 
depending on the setup and depending on the circumstance. Okay, so I'm not getting into into that into those details. I'm just showing you that, and you might want to stop yourself out long before it gets to that that new high or new low, whatever the case may be. But the point I'm trying to make is anything beyond that new high or beyond that new low, the signal is completely negated because the market is going on to make new highs or the market is going on to make new lows. And you're looking for a change in trend and you're looking for a new trend. And if the market goes on to make new highs, then the old trend is resuming. So let's say you got this signal and then the market turns right back around and starts making new highs. Well, that signal just flat out didn't work. As I often say, if it all if it always worked, you'd never see my fat ass again. Okay. So that's step three. You trade the bow tie. Step four, put a stop in above that all time high or that major high. Okay. Um, and then sit back, relax. I know, ha. Huh? And just follow the market lower or higher, whatever the case may be. And if you're not stopped out, then you want to take partial profit somewhere. And then you want to trail that stop lower in the remainder position, just in case that new trade doesn't resume. So it's six easy steps. There you go. This is how you catch tops and bottoms. And I guess catch is probably a bad word. Catch implies that you're trying to pick. Okay, we're actually waiting for the setup and the signal and the trigger to happen. Okay. All right. Any questions on that? I know I talk about you could a lot of people here have been here before, so they know all this, uh, but got to keep in mind that uh, hopefully we get a few new people once a week. All right. Um, I did a YouTube few weeks back. If you go to what's new on my website homepage, you will see the, uh, there's a link to that. Let me just show you what's new is and again. There's a lot of stuff in the sidebar. I know the website's a little busy, but there's a lot of stuff in the sidebar that's really kind of cool. So right here, it's what's new. New this, I'm sorry, new this week. See, I don't even know my own website. And uh, also just under here, here's your countdowns. Obviously, this is today's show. It's at zero because we're doing the show right now. Hong Kong, if uh, you're in Hong Kong on uh, in January, please stop by. I'll be speaking in English, so uh, and I'll also have, there'll be a free seminar, also a uh, paid all day seminar there but anyway so this is the sidebar this is all the stuff is so if you go to do this week this is the point before I forget and you could get to the uh the market and the bear market you could also go to my youtube channel and the link for that is under um market in a minute but down here this is uh these are a couple of bar uh, videos i made on the possible bear market so check those out okay michael says there are 600 and 700 pound black bears around here um, I think there might be some, uh, you know, I don't know for a fact. I don't know if there's any bears around here or not, but Louisiana black bear has made a really big uh, comeback. In fact, you know, you know what I can't believe is sometimes I'll be driving around and I'll see these bear crossing signs. And I just want to write my uh, local, um, what you call them, councilman or whatever and say, you know, this is a really busy road. Why don't you move that bear crossing to a less busy road, and I don't, you know, for some reason, I don't know why they put those bear crossings in those uh, places. All right, uh, I think that's all I have for the slides today. As you can see, not a whole lot to cover. Uh, I do want to jump into the markets and look at the live charts. So, uh, you guys want to start asking questions about individual stocks? I'll be happy to. Uh, uh, we'll we'll get to those in just a few minutes, but feel free to start asking those now. Um, again, I do have podcasting, and that's all in that sidebar. And and after I publish the podcast. Usually I'll put this in the actual column itself, so keep an eye out for that. Okay, and then uh, foresight and hindsight service, and you can see this. This slide's kind of messed up, but you can see everything that I pick in all of my analysis and warts and all. I like that. Uh, that's kind of a, a cool saying. So you'll see what I did right, and you'll see what I do wrong. You know. Okay, uh, and then any questions, uh, feel free to shoot me an email. Let's go to the uh, the charts and. I'll be happy to look at your individual stocks in just one second. Um, I'm going to go back to black, if you guys don't mind. Um, some people like the white, but it seems like the consensus is everybody likes black, or most people like back, black, I should say. And then we'll do 
an invisible one. <laughs> Richie says, oh, I don't know. We could tell the bear to, where to cross. <laughs> yeah, obviously that was a joke, but it's still funny. I think somebody wrote in. To, I've seen that on talk shows before where people write in letters <laughs> or people publish letters that, like that. All right, let's take a look at the um, – Let's take a look at the uh, S&P 500, and then let's take a look at the, the NASDAQ, obviously. Let's take a look at other indices. I want to look at a few sectors, and then I want to pop out uh, and maybe go through the database real quick, and then we'll, uh, we'll talk about your individual stocks. Here's the thing. This does not surprise me at all, this action today. You often on on a big news day, especially like these Fed days, you often get a big pop from excitement, and then the market immediately goes to what's next. And that's the problem with trying to trade news. I think trying to trade news is an exercise in futility. You'd be better off, instead of trading news, you'd be better off fading news. And there are some people out there who have – talked about ways to fade the news. You wait for the reaction and then look to go the other way. You could do that on a micro level. You could do that on a more macro level. Like if we take out uh, yesterday's low, sell the market, okay? I'm not that short-term oriented, but that will probably work because everybody who got excited yesterday when the market ran up will now be losing money in just one day, and you'll probably see some additional selling off. So – we almost have a 180 degree turnaround from just yesterday uh, for all intents and purposes close enough. So that's certainly um, certainly not a good thing. We not that the fact that we're not seeing any follow through just yet from that. Now, again, if we take a look at like the the weekly bow ties on this live chart, you can see that this signal again, I'm not going to beat the dead horse, don't worry, is remains in effect until we make new highs. Somebody a while back says, that, well, Dave, you know, when I was down here and I was a little bit more bearish than I, than I am now, they were saying, um, hey, Dave, uh, when are you going to become bullish? When exactly are you going to become bullish? And my answer was when the market starts making new highs. And that hasn't happened yet. And then the next question was, well, what about between here when we're down there and there? And my answer was, so what? OK, doesn't mean I'm not going to buy some stocks if they set up and look good. But I'm not going to become, quote unquote, bullish. And feel great about the market until it starts making new highs and stays there. OK. <laughs> Don says black black charts matter. <laughs> yeah. OK, let's let's be careful there. OK. Uh, everybody's so sensitive nowadays. You can't even make jokes anymore about anything. Some kid got kicked out of school for wearing a storm a stormtrooper shirt because he had a laser gun. Whatever. Uh, that's a whole other story. But you can see on a short short term basis. Now this is not a major sell signal. This is a daily chart. It's not coming off of major highs, multi month highs. But it is what I call a minor bow tie sell signal in here. So we do have a, a minor signal, and then obviously the major sell signal still remains in place. And then this is the chart I, I made before the presentation, but I forgot to put it in the slides. I just want to show you that when you go back to 2015, we really hadn't made a whole lot of forward progress in quite a while. So we've had some zigs and zags above and below. We had a few good trades in here, too. If you go back and, and look at the uh, weekend charts from a few weeks back, I, put a, uh, I made a chart, and I pointed out all the trades that we had in 2015 on the chart, and uh, we did have a few good trades for the year in spite of the market. Then the market eventually caught up with us, and then, and then from this part of the market forward, from summer forward, we have mostly sat on our hands and only taken a few positions, I think three total. Anyway, let's take a look at the NASDAQ composite. Same sort of action there, too. Uh, this is a little hook down in here where you have the, the rally and the, the market gaps higher and then comes back in. And again, I'm not, I used to be a little bit more into studying all these very minute patterns, but it is good to know about them just so you understand. So you had all this buying yesterday, almost into the close, and then this 
this morning when you see a higher open like this, this is kind of like the, the dumbasses coming in who didn't get that buying done and have to rush out and buy because they think because the market turned around, it's going to keep going higher. And then the market sells off, as you can see. It doesn't always do that. Sometimes it keeps going higher, as you know. But when you do see a gap higher and come back in like this, then you know that some people are trapped on the wrong side of the market. Again, I don't trade these short-term patterns like this, but you can, if you're very short-term oriented, these are things to kind of watch for, these little hook downs, as they call them. Uh, shorter term, not so short of term. NASDAQ, uh, obviously, right at or stalling short of these old highs in here. And then we're still stalling short of these all-time highs in here. Um, a market will often do what it has to do to frustrate the most and fake out the most or cause the most pain. I've got those adages from uh, from Linda Rasky. And I asked her where she got them, and she said they weren't her. She probably got them off the floor or something. She called them florisms. Anyway, um, but a market will often do what it has to do to frustrate the most because it really looked like it was obviously going to hell in a handbasket. Is that the word? Uh, not that long ago, and then, of course, what does it do? It has this big, sharp rally back up to make everybody think, oh, just kidding, and then what's it going to do now? It'll probably now have its real rollover, but not with a few fake-outs first. So anyway, now is that kind of wide loose all over the place, totally short its old highs. The real story has been, for the last year or more, the real story's been at a rusty, a little bit more obvious here. You can go all the way back to 2013, and see that we haven't made a whole lot of forward progress in the rusty. For the most part, in more recent times, you can see it's been in a pretty serious slide. Even on those days where the NASDAQ and the S&P 500 have been up a little, and, and even more than a little, the average stock out there, as evidenced by this broad-based index, has been down. Okay. Why minor need weekly? In the S&P 500? Well, the... There's nothing wrong with a minor signal, okay? This is a minor uh, – no, the daily – you can have a major daily – this was a major daily sell signal. And the, in fact, this is a great uh, teachable moment here. You see this bow tie here on the daily? That's off of all-time highs, so that's a major signal, okay? And that top remains in place until that top is taken out decisively. So, yeah, you might have gotten stopped out if you tried to trade that, but that signal is still a valid signal or still in place, I should say, until it gets taken out. Now, you had a minor signal here. I don't know if it actually triggered. But a minor signal here because you're just coming off of multi-week lows, whereas this was off of all-time highs. Okay? Let me know if that makes sense. Okay, you got it. All right, Joe. Uh, no problem. Yeah, that's cool. Good question. So now this is kind of a minor signal because this isn't off of um, all-time highs. But it's close. You know, so it's still a, it still could be a valid signal, but those signals that are just kind of in the middle, let's not get too excited about those. Uh, for instance, it's, it's kind of sloppy, but the the rusty tried to kind of make a bow tie here. That's not off of all time lows or multi multi year lows or anything. And then it's kind of made a minor sell signal down again, as you can see here. Okay, that's just off of multi week highs. Now again, if you're very short term oriented, maybe you could you can trade these short short term signals, but the the ones you want to watch for are the ones like this that come off of all-time highs. And then also, I'm just kind of seeing this in real time. Notice you had a signal here that didn't materialize. That high got taken out. Sometimes, and this is something I talked a little bit in yes, uh, yesterday's presentation, is sometimes you get that second mouse type of trade where the second signal works. You get like a fake-out signal. Then you get the um, – let's see if I have – oops. No, I can't get the graphic up quick on the fly. Uh, but sometimes you get that, what I call a second mouse, or, or somebody else has named it that. It's, I'm, it's not my original thought, uh, but I like it. The early bird gets the worm, the second mouse gets the cheese. Sometimes you get the second sell signal in a row, and that's the real one. And sometimes if you go back and look at, like, major bull and bear cycles, like the Euro top and uh, what was that, 2000? And, I'm dating myself here, but um, – I forget exactly when the Euro top was. I have some charts on it. It was 2005, maybe, 2008. The major Euro top was like one of those double top type of moves where you had a double bow tie and a double top. So Rusty not looking so hot in here. Um, a lot of stocks are just not looking so hot either. A lot of stocks have stalled well short of their prior highs, have formed these bow ties down, um, but that's minor sell signals. 
but the major bow tie cell signals are still in the place and whatever other cell signal you want to use. Okay. So that's insurance. Uh, real estate is just kind of chopping along in here. There was a lot of excitement yesterday because the Fed raised rates. I'm not sure why that's good for real estate. It seems like it'd be just the opposite, right? And it had a big rally. Uh, some of these areas that did make it to new highs recently, like defense, they broke out to new highs, but so far they've come right back in. Simi's tried to break out recently, came right back in, tried to rally up again. So, it, it, by the way, here's your minor bow tie buy would be right here. Your minor buy would be here. I'm not too excited about a minor buy. I think it's more important to pay attention to the major sell signals again like that. Okay, I know I kind of beat a dead horse on this, but it's such an important concept. I really want to drive the point home. So there's the civvies. You can see, eh, not looking so great. Kind of sideways at best, at least lately. Uh, computer software tried to break out the new highs lately, but they came right back in, and now it's kind of stalling short of those prior highs in here. So that's kind of ugly. In fact, that's a major sell signal right there, okay, because you're coming off an of all-time high. So that's a major sell signal there, at least on a daily chart. On a weekly chart, I don't think you have a sell signal yet. No, not quite. But when this makes a weekly sell signal, that could be fairly ugly. Drugs, speaking of weekly signals, made a weekly signal uh, not too long ago. That's a major, major sell. This is a weekly bow tie off of all-time highs. So that's a major sell still in effect for now. A lot of areas like M&C, material construction, at or near new lows in here to just kind of pull back. A little choppy, but just coming off of one year plus low. So that's something to keep an eye on. Obviously, the energies have been absolutely abysmal for a long, long time, drawing down arrow. We tried to go along an energy or a metal of mining or two. And we fail miserably, but that's okay. He who fights and runs away, you know the rest, lives to fight another day. Okay, so energy is down towards new lows, obviously in a pretty serious downtrend. Keep in mind that energies are part of the indices. So when they do rally, it will help the overall market. And I think we saw that recently, at least over a few days here and a few days there. Because we had a couple days where the S&P was actually a little higher, but the average stock was lower. And the reason the S&P was higher, or one of the main reasons, was because the energies had pushed the market higher. So falling energies aren't necessarily a positive for the stock market. It actually scores as a bit of a negative. But energy is obviously at a downtrend. No rocket science there. Same thing for metals and mining. And like I often say, it's always darkest right before it gets more dark. I assume that we would begin to bottom out in here, double bottom, triple bottom, however you want to look at it, head and shoulders bottom. And then we took that out like butter, and we've had a fairly persistent trend lower in here. It looks like today is no exception. We're making new lows in the energies. I'm sorry, the metals and mining. So these commodity stocks, you know, hey, Dave, what stocks are going to be great stocks to buy in 2016? Uh, I don't know. If, you know, put a gun to my head, which my wife hates when I say that, but uh, put a gun to my head. I would say energies and metals and mining. But, Dave, I thought you are not a bottom fisher. Well, I'm not. But they're so beat up that somewhere in 2016, they'll probably bottom out. So if I just had to blindly say buy one, that would be the ones. And, and then what year was it uh, where the energies just went straight up? Was that 2008? And I went to uh, an awards. I was at an awards, Boarding Store Awards Banquet in Rimini, Italy. And they had guy after guy after guy going up, uh, you know, Best fund of the year, uh, energy fund. And the guys would go up and they were smiling. Uh, Grazie mille. And they get their award and all. And I'm like, oh, geez. <laughs> You're not going to see these guys again next year because not only because – I'm not being uh, shot on Friday. It's just that uh, – it's just that, you know, usually after an extended trend like that, the trend ends and something else begins to trend. So uh, I would say if I if I had to guess, it would just purely a guess when you're, uh, when you're trying to predict markets a year out. But just purely a guess, energy and metals and mining would probably be the markets that you want to be buying in 2016. But don't run out and buy them. Wait for a setup. Wait for them to bottom out. Okay, no need to catch a falling knife just yet. 
Utilities got a big pop yesterday, but uh, that's probably going to be a one and done for those guys. You can see real choppy, but they worked their way lower as of late. So you sort of have to look at everything. Uh, I've talked a lot about the transports in more recent times. And if you take a look at like a weekly, very clean weekly bow tie here down, okay? And then just look at the slope of your 50-week moving average. It's, it's rolled over it here too. I'm not a Dow theorist, but transports going lower are not a good thing because they're yet another sector like the energies and metals and body that make up the entire market, okay? New 52-week low for USO. Yeah, we failed miserably on the USO. We had a um, we had a daily bow tie off of major lows back here. It was a first thrust, okay? It shot higher, pulled back, and you can see it initially made a little bit, but we did stop out at a loss, okay? So, you know, somebody once pointed out that a lot of my trades uh, do go positive, before stopping out. Well, that's great, but the bottom line is the bottom line. Unless I'm putting money in my account after a trade, I don't consider it a success just because it worked briefly, okay? But yeah, it did take off for a little while, and I thought it was going to be off to the races, and then obviously it's rolled back over. So so USO, the, the uh, which is the oil fund, is hitting new lows for the year. Um, I think if you did bottom fish, and it was um, Mike Moody was talking about this once in a, in a presentation he was giving on momentum a couple years back, and his point is that stocks have no end use value. By end use value, something that that could be used, okay, and uh, I guess toilet paper. Uh, speaking of end use, would be a good example. Um, and I've used this example before, but let's, I don't know what toilet paper costs because when I shop, I don't really pay attention to the prices too much. Um, but I, I'm guessing 10 cents for high quality toilet paper is probably a good price. So if you could buy up a couple thousand rolls at 10 cents and store them away and keep them safe and, safe and sound in storage, that would probably be a good good investment because, one, they have end use. You could actually physically use them yourself. And, two, other people might need them at some point in time, and the price could go up. So if there was a way you could store oil and you had deep, 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 deep pockets, okay? I'm not, no, hey, Dave, you turning into a value player on us? No, I'm not turning into a value player on you. I'm just saying that something that has end use value – might be worthwhile. Silver, for instance, is used in uh, not so much gold, although you can make some arguments about gold, but silver has an end use value because it's actually being used up in industry. And it's used uh, a lot more than gold is, electronics and stuff. So if you had a way to hoard these things, then, then by all means, but you would have to have a very long time frame and a very uh, deep pockets and also uh, a lot, a lot of patience, obviously. So I'm not saying you rush out and do that, but I'm just saying that the point is just the opposite. Don't buy a stock, even if it is an energy stock, just because it's at low levels and you think it's a value. I think that's a very bad idea. Hey, Dave, what about Warren Buffett? Well, I got to ask about Warren Buffett yesterday. And, and Berkshire Hathaway occasionally has over a 50% drawdown when the market goes down 50%, so do they. Now, Mr. Buffett's uh, a billionaire, so he's obviously done something right. I can't pick him apart too much, right, or uh, throw too many stones uh, at him. Uh, but you got to be careful with that value kind of thing because it'll work until it don't. And if you, once you lose 50%, that's, that's tough to recover from. Again, the deep pockets thing long term. But uh, avoid stocks that are headed lower. Uh, foods tried to pop up yesterday getting back to stocks, uh, but they came back in. They're kind of wide and loose. I have a hard time getting excited about foods. Banks, I've been mean, keeping an eye on banks. I think banks are in trouble in here. Um, you kind of have this, uh, I guess your weekly major signal was here. Kind of interesting. This is another good example of major minor signals. Notice that you had a major, oops, notice you had a major bow tie sell signal here. 
went down a little bit, not a whole lot. And that signal stays in place until when? Until that high gets taken out, which it didn't, okay? And you might have had a minor signal in here, minor because it's not off of multi, multi-year lows, okay? And then the market rolled back over again. So banks, I think, are in trouble. Some of the regional areas have been doing quite uh, well, but they have rolled back over and have begun to implode again. So uh, keep an eye on the regionals for shorting opportunities. Let's take a look at gold, the stocks. The gold stocks looks like they would have come down and challenge their old lows. Uh, this could be a mother of all bottoms in the making. But keep in mind, you know, my my uh, my caveat there, my, the way I can couch there is say, well, it's a process more than an event. And the process might take a while longer. So I would hold off on gold for now. And then let's take a look at gold to commodity. Gold to commodity looking okay. Uh, good questions. Keep them coming. Um, gold to commodity banging out new lows today. So it's always darkest right before it gets no more dark. No need to be a hero just yet. Just try your big arrow here, okay? Now, it looks like it's gotten beaten up and going down for a long, long time. So maybe it's time to bottom, but no need to be a hero until it does. By the way, getting back to those... Every major top, every major top will have a bow tie or some other emerging trend pattern. So will every major bottom. But not every signal, obviously, will turn into the mother of all tops and bottoms. But here's your weekly bow tie in gold. Look at how beautiful that is. And as long as that prior high is not taken out, that top remains in place. Well, now, obviously, I wouldn't wait until it got past this high to start looking for buy signals. Now that it's gone down for several years and making this, what, five, six, seven, eight-year lows or whatever it is, six-year lows, then maybe now is the time to start keeping an eye out for signals, okay? And then it also made, to those of you familiar with my gatekeeper pattern, made a gatekeeper here, okay? And then it followed it up with a bow tie. It took a little while. And this is a top that took, what, two or three years to form. But notice that that major signal stayed in place for a few years. Now, I don't know if you could sit through that trade. But at the least, knowing that that major top remains in place, you could say, well, I want to be mostly short versus being mostly long if you're taking more of a trader um, aspect. It's space for all your junk. Yeah, I do have a lot of junk. Had to, had to do a little cleaning for um, Greg got here. Okay. Um, gets here, I should say. All right, I think that's. I think I've kind of beat the dead horse enough. Uh, the only the other thing I want to point out real quick is that if you look at your uh, average stock, and I like to look at at least 250 days for the average, um, so the stock is thick enough to trade. And let's just copy these. I'm just going to make my tradable universe right now. This is what I'm going to be looking at later today. So let's flag all these stocks. And I'm going to copy them over to what I call my tradable universe right here. And if you go look at that tradable universe, and if you go back a couple of weeks, I'd talk about how to make all these things. And if you have the stock selection course, I obviously explain it in there too. Uh, my point today is not how to do the uh, mechanics, but more just like the average stock. So let's sort them by 50-day uh, HV. And, oh, by the way, the other thing I'd like to show, too, if you sort your stocks by the, the new 52-week highs and you look at the makeup of them, and if you're seeing mostly defensive issues in bond stocks, then the market could be in trouble. And I think the last time I did that, we were seeing mostly that. These are some buyouts in here. Let's see. There you go. There's a bond fund. We just saw another bond fund in here. And there's a few stocks that are doing okay in here, but there are quite a few bond funds. And then uh, there's probably some defensive stocks in here, such as foods. See, that's a food stock. I'm not going to get too excited about foods and bonds and stocks like that or ETFs such as those in a new high list. Now, if you see a whole bunch of biotechs and a whole bunch of other stuff like that, then that's pretty good. 
So when you go through the average stock, let's just drop to like the middle volatility down, 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 down. Oh, that one was bouncing off of lows. That one sideways. Okay, that's bouncing off of lows. That's a China fund, China something, China finance. But for the most part, as you can see, down, 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 oop, up, up. Okay, down, you know, just looking at a lot of charts sideways, down, down, oh, that was sideways, sorry. Kind of bottoming, down, 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 down. You get the idea, right? And if you do this every day, you get a pretty good feel for what's going on, down, down, down. You know, this was kind of popped up, but it, you really could have traded that down. So, I mean, I just randomly picked the, the level and the volatility so we're not looking at these super-duper volatile stocks. It started going through them, and you could see the average stock is going down. And you look at 2,000 stocks every night, and that's about how fast I go a lot of times to get a feel for what's really going on. I might slow down if I see something that looks interesting, or I might flag it. For further analysis, maybe even a setup I want to trade. But I would strongly encourage you to look at a couple thousand stocks every night. And that's going to give you a really good feel for what's going on in the market. And when you see most stocks going down, like we just saw, and if you go through all of these, you're going to really see, you're going to really drive the point home. Then you have to ask yourself, hey, well, maybe this market could be in trouble. All right, let's open it up for questions. Before we do that, I do have one stock. Uh, I do have a write-in that was asked um, of me. Let's see if I can remember what it was. Oh, here it is, FCB. And this is from a client. And the reason he picked a bank, I'm guessing, is because I have a bank for today recommended as a short. And uh, you'll see that set up next week in the foresight issue of the service. And this is almost a bow tie. But one of the first things I noticed before we talk about the pattern is that the volume is really low on this, uh, especially for something that you're trying to short. Maybe if you're trying to get long, you could trade a stock that trades around, what is it, 240,000 shares. But it might be a little harder to short, might be a little harder to borrow. So I would immediately toss it out as a possible short. But pattern-wise, he's got a pretty good eye because we have an all-time high. We have a bit of a thrust lower. And a pullback. One thing I am noticing though is that it's only 39, and it's only like it's only about a three-point drop, which isn't that much. But it's a bank, and volatility is pretty low, as you can see, HV of 27. So it's probably in trouble. But the next thing that I noticed that it does have a lot of support right down here. Okay, so yeah, that would be a good problem to have, and you'd make a little money on the trade. But I would prefer a stock without a whole lot of support below it if I'm going to look for a short. So I would avoid the stock based on that. But, yes, shorter term, thrust down, a little bit of a pullback. First thrust could be a bow tie soon of all-time highs. I certainly see what he's looking at, and I can't argue with him there. All right, Thomas has been waiting patiently for now. Now. <laughs> um, it looks okay. And the one thing that kind of jumps out at me is that it really didn't clear its prior high in here by that much, but it, it did okay. And then it pulled all the way back to its prior high. So you've got this um, kind of inverted V pattern that comes all the way back to this uh, this prior high in here. Now, it's okay to have that what I call a witch hat within a trend, but when it comes back and retraces 100%, of that breakout, I'm no longer excited about it. It has to reset itself by going off to new highs as a trend guy. So now it's got to get to new highs and then pull back before I get excited again. The beauty of having a few thousand stocks in your tradable universe is you can find the stock that fits the pattern as opposed to sitting around and waiting for that stock to set up. Okay. Uh, Ernie wants to know about GE. I'm not a big fan of, of big, thick stocks, except occasionally they can make good shorting opportunities. Um, although GE, I have to admit, has trended fairly nicely in more recent times. Uh, why do I have this? I think somebody asked about this a few weeks back. And these big, thick stocks tend to go up, they tend to go down, they tend to go up, they tend to go down, they tend to go up. It's like you can see they're just kind of all over the place. And a little tough to trade. It is making new highs. 
albeit just barely, but it would have to actually clear those new highs decisively for me to get excited about it. Take a look at the HV on that at 17. What are the spiders? Anybody know? 14, okay? So the, the volatility is not much more than the overall market. Efficient stocks can be really tough to trade because there's there's a – somebody pointed out, I think it was Phil. Phil, are you in here today? Phil pointed out that Apple Computer has over 5,000 analysts, okay? So once you get that many people looking at something and that many people trading something, then it tends to get a little um, little choppy, hard to trend, and the trends are kind of tight. Hey, Phil. Uh, Phil is in the house. Don wants to know about Loxo. Uh, it's it's okay. I, I, as far as a, a Don stock, is that – oh, it's a different Don. Um uh, yeah, it, it looks okay, but notice that it had 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17 stocks in the uh, – uh, had the wrong Don. Sorry about that, Don. Um, 17 days of the pullback. Tried to rally. It's already coming right back in. So I think I would pass on this one. I'd let it, I'd let it hit new highs before getting too excited. Also, volume a little bit low on this. Uh, it's a relatively new issue, so – I'm a little bit more lenient when it comes to those, when it comes to volume. But just based on the number of days of the pullback, and also notice that it did pull back like kind of below where it tried to break out from. Again, kind of that 100% retrace. And it didn't really get that far past its last little breakout level. Uh, so I would pass on it now. If you're long, it, it's in an uptrend. So I would stay long and trail will stop higher. David wants to know about HZNP. That's going to be a... Uh, pharmaceutical I think horizon maybe yeah problem with this one is let's look at uh, the close today and let's back the chart out a little bit and let's measure that okay that is going to be a change of two point or minus 1.33 depends on what day you look at either plus or minus two percent going back all the way to October so two and a half months no forward progress. Uh, looks like the longer-term downtrend, yes, may still be an attack. Uh, you, you had that major sell signal with the bow tie here. If you're short, stay short, but I wouldn't rush out and buy that stock uh, based on the recent action there. Okay, uh, Cliff wants to know about Apple. Apple can trend at times and has trended in the past, but I think – I think it's time to stick a fork in Apple. I think its days are done. Uh, let me go on record in saying that. It's not the stock it once was. Um, it used to be a cult type of stock, and it was hard to trade because it just sort of just went up. I guess just buy it and hold it, right? But I think those days might be done, might be over for Apple. Uh, just for S&Gs. Yeah, we got a weekly bow tie working here, so this is probably the mother of all tops for Apple, and until Apple sort of making new highs, I wouldn't get excited about it. But, yeah, it's pretty ugly um, as far as the chart goes. I don't think it's a short-term setup. Uh, maybe if it just continued lower on pullbacks, but I'd like to see it maybe take out, believe it or not, I'd like to see it take out 90 before trading it. It could be worth trading on a swing trade, but uh, I think there's better stocks you could find out there on the short side. Try to find stocks on the short side that are in their early phases of rolling over and haven't already sort of rolled over like this. Those regional banks, for instance, are a good example of that. <laughs> Thanks to have puts. Oh, you're welcome, Cliff. Good. Yeah, just sit on them, man. Run. I like run or did like run. I like it better before it ran. Uh <laughs> This was on our list a while back, uh, the Landry list. In fact, how do I do that? Control them. Uh, it was on back on 12.11, 12.14, as you can see right here. And this is the beauty of the uh, four-sided and hide side service. You'll get to see these stocks on my list. Uh, you might have to wait a week, but that's okay. At least you get to learn the patterns and the setups. Uh, it, it wasn't, it didn't jump out at me as the greatest stock in the world, but it did have a thrust for lows, kind of a micro cup and handle. Uh, I would wait for the next pullback though, obviously before trading it. The only problem now is it's going up about a hundred percent over a short period of time. So it's going to become very 
dangerous to trade. But, yeah, it certainly did have a, a decent run over a very short period of time out of that low-level little uh, first thrust bow tie type of setup. But leave it alone for now. How about CFRX for David? CF, a lot of questions today. Good question. CFRX. Um, well, it's super duper thin. Okay, eighty thousand on average. Let's back the chart out a little bit. You've got uh, quite a bit of overhead supply to deal with. Uh, it also is electric cardiogram for those of you who don't know what electric cardiogram is or what it looks like. E L E C. T R O. This is what electrocardiogram looks like. So if you ever find yourself looking at a stock and you hear beep beep beep, you know that it's probably a beep 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 <laughs> stock that you don't want to be trading. Let's keep that up in case we need it. All right, uh, Joe's been waiting uh, patiently for SPG. SPG. <clears throat> yeah, this looks like it's in trouble. I'm not a big fan of these REITs. Uh, notice the HV is only 22 because they don't move around a lot. But I don't want to talk out of both sides of my mouth either. Sometimes your best opportunities on the short side can be in these lower volatility stocks after coming off of major highs. Uh, you do have plenty of volume. Uh, yeah, I would say I wouldn't personally trade it. It's just too choppy for me. The volatility is a little too low. But it does look like a stock that's in a lot of trouble. If you short, stay short. It's not really set up because it's kind of wide and loose. But is it, you know, let me interview myself. Is it a top? Yes, for now at least. Uh, okay, good. You get it? That's good. That's good. All right, fantastic. GAAP SPAX Earning Index. GAAP, is that a stock? GAAP SPX Earning Index. Is that uh, – it's not coming up in my system, Andre. You have another symbol for it? Yep, I lived it. I forgot it now. Oh, yeah, you mean on the service? Yeah, that's the thing. You know, you have a losing trade. you got to forget it as quickly as possible and move on. I was watching this um, – I don't know if it was a mockumentary or what, but I was watching a guy on uh, – and I've seen this behavior before, and he's supposed to be this this great uh, uh, professional forex trader. And maybe he is, you know, maybe he is. He, he is. I mean, I'm not saying he doesn't have the abilities, but he was like scalping one tick, one tick, one tick, one tick. I'm like, oh my god, this guy. Every time he tried to go to the bathroom, he'd come running back to the screen, or every time he tried to leave his house, he'd come running back, get an alarm. He come running down the stairs. He'd go to try to eat some lunch or get a cup of coffee. Run back to the screens, you know, scalp, scalp, scalp. And then he had a 97 pip loss. <laughs> in one currency, and he was ignoring all the other setups he had because he felt like he had to make back that 97% or 97 pip loss of that one currency. So it's like he is missing a tremendous amount of opportunities. And number one, he's kind of uh, eating like a bird, defecating like an elephant, but that's another argument altogether. And as I've said before, I had um, a broker friend once in um, – I called him up, and this was in 99. I'm like, or he called me, whatever. We're talking stocks, and uh, we were looking at all these great stocks, and I asked him, you, you know, did you buy this one? Did you buy that one? He's like, no, no, no. And I'm like, why? And he's like, well, I'm nursing some positions. And it's like, well, there's nothing to do. You can't, you know, and, and by the way, I, I know, uh, what was that movie? Meet the Fockers. I know you could, uh, I know you could, <laughs> I know you could milk anything with nipples, but, I'm not sure that stocks have nipples and how you would milk them. You know, he's nursing some position. So the point I'm trying to make, even though I'm being silly, is that you can't let a position affect you. And in this, this documentary or whatever it was, mockumentary on this Forex guy, he's all freaked out because he's down 97 pips at his average trade, I guess, is a pip or two. <laughs> But he's going to keep trading that one pair, trying to make back that loss when – 12 other pairs or however many other pairs are setting up and he's missed all those great opportunities. So yeah, it's a little free, cheap, fast lesson in psychology. Forget about it. And by the way, thanks for forgetting about it, Craig, and not uh, raking me over the coals. <laughs> Hello, Peter. IAU time. IAU. 
Uh, it's time another symbol. Uh, one symbol on a line, if you don't mind. Uh, I use banging out new lows. That's just kind of like looking at the GLD, right? Uh, or uh, what's the Canadian one? I know the guy who was part of the Canadian one. CAF? Yeah, there it is. No, that's China. Um, anyway, uh, it's banging out new lows, so I wouldn't rush out and short it right now. But I definitely wouldn't rush out and buy it until you get uh, like a bow tie up or some sort of other signal. <laughs> Let's see. Oh, you know, oh, I just I just discovered something. What I did was um, I just sorted the questions by the who's asking them. And that way it's it's going to things won't be as much out of context. Now it makes sense. OK. My system may be different for the index. OK. Gap index It's called. Uh, Earnings chart or something? Let's see if we can find that. E A R N I N G S. I don't think my account is current at stock charts. I guess we can get it free, huh? Uh, Wisdom Tree, total earnings, EPS maybe? Yeah, I mean, it's just kind of, it's super duper thin. I mean, incredibly thin. I don't know if you. Even though it's an ETF, I'd be careful trying to trade something like that. Yeah, it's just kind of wide and loose and sideways. Susan says, WFM, dream boy. Susan a while back said she dreams of me, which was very nice, I guess, for Susan having those nightmares. Um, you know, shorter term, I look at this, it looks pretty good. But longer term, this gap down and this overhead supply, that would kind of gnaw on me and stop me from taking the trade. But let's see what she sees. Um, the only problem is you just had this really one big day off the lows, which is okay, and that kind of forces that bow tie to form. Uh, shorter term, if I was just seeing this, I'd say it's okay and worth a shot. But then your trade is going to hit right into this gap of this overhead supply. So I think it would pass on that. Whole Foods, is that Whole Paycheck? <laughs> I've never been in a Whole Paycheck. I heard it's, I heard it's a pretty cool deal. There's a few things I, I like to cook, so there's a couple things I'd like to go try to find there, but uh, I heard you need to bring your wallet. Uh, time for canoe. Uh, no, it's just draw your arrows here. It's still on a pretty serious downtrend. So wait until you have some sort of transitional setup to the upside before looking to uh, buy that. Opinion on ILMN weekly. Let's take a look at that. That's cool that you want to look at a weekly too. Yeah, there, there you go. There's a. Did my cage just slip out? There you go. Look at that stock there. Uh, <laughs> you got a gap down on a weekly chart. Okay, that's reversal gap strategy. You have a first thrust on the weekly chart. Okay, and then that sold off from there, and now you have a bow tie. When did the bow tie actual trigger, or did it trigger yet? Let's see. Let's take a look at the um, the data on this. Okay, you definitely have a bow tie here. And you kind of have a higher high, but then it made a lower low in the same day. So if you didn't trigger on that one, then your trigger would probably be somewhere in here. So you could argue that your te technically your bow tie wasn't until this day here. But it did make a higher high here, okay? And then it did make a higher low here. So it's two ways of looking at it. No, yeah, yeah. See, you just made a higher low in this bar. So and sometimes that's that's worth a trade. So if you just went off a higher low, you, you would have triggered it here. But, yeah, on a weekly basis, this stock looks like it's in a lot of trouble. Good, uh, good eye on that one, Peter. What would you like to use for a stop and run if six is still in? And that six is still in? Wow, good job, Joe. Let's take a look at Joe's run. Well, if you got in at six, let's say that you took partial profit somewhere in the eight or nine range, okay? And then now you're going to have to brace for the mother of all retraces. And, it, and I love, don't get me wrong, I love getting in a stock and watch it go up 100%. But I know as someone who's trying to catch a longer-term trend, that's not going to be sustainable. And I know I'm going to get a big knockout move. So that kind of creates a dilemma. You know, that almost forces you to think, eh, maybe I need to exit. And then 
But you got to stick to your rules, and your rules are that you're going to try to trade the stock longer term, but you already took your partial profit, and you're just giving up open profits. So with all that said, I mean, you would have to have a stop probably, oh, somewhere in the 10 range or something on this, now that it's gotten so crazy. And if you get stopped out, it's still better than poking the eye. Peter wants to know about ENPH. Yeah, this is, this is shaping up. Uh, at least it's filled the gap here. The only problem is this 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 uptrend, so to speak, is just one bar, and it went up 100% in one bar. So that would have me a little nervous because that's a little – I mean, it's as crazy stocks as I love. That's almost too crazy. Look at the HV168. But, yeah, it's kind of interesting, but I would probably pass just because it went up, what, 200% or 100% in one or two day, one day here. Uh, but, yeah, it looks like it's trying to bottom out for sure. I can't argue with that. Uh, I mean, I guess you could buy it and use a $3 stop, you know, provided they never go out of uh, business. That would be, a, uh, what do they call that, a, um, an option that never expires. Andre wants to look at uh, CYTK. CYTK. Well, it's sort of going sideways in here for a while. So I would pass, and then your your up move was just a few days, or the majority up move was just over a few days, and then it went sideways. Sideways, you know, maybe it's one of these uh, so-called box stocks where it makes a base, jumps to another base, and then keeps doing that. But longer term, it's sort of all over the place. It must trade a lot on news, uh, which makes it difficult to hold on to and trade. Uh, but from a purely technical standpoint, it's going sideways too long in here for me to to look to get long. If you are long, congratulations, uh, Trailer Stop. Susan says, energy stocks getting beaten up. What about XOM as a short? Let's take a look at Exxon Mobil. Um, well, it's not coming up. That would be the mother of all bow ties back here, obviously. Okay. And it's kind of rolling back over. At, if you did take a trade here, it looks like it would come back maybe to its old lows, which – wouldn't be a bad problem to have. It's better than a poke in the eye, but you want to set yourself up for the potential of unlimited gains. I know you can't do that technically on the short side, but you know what I'm trying to say. Um, so I would not trade a stock that looks like this. There's a um, – I can't say it right now because it's in the Landry list, but there's a refiner that looks like a pretty good short that's at high levels. Now, keep in mind, a refiner is going to act just the opposite of the energies. We don't have enough time to get into that right now. Uh, EAPH for Peter. Did we just talk about that one? Yeah, we talked about that one. Um, SciTech for long. We just talked about that one too. i got to start deleting these. Yeah, we talked about that. Too busy waiting for the next rain, Dave. No worries. Hey, that's right. Next train. Yeah, okay. <laughs> I was about to say. Why are you waiting for rain? Uh, Gary wants to know, soon as a Phoenix stocks, that's, uh, that warms my heart that, that you've paid attention in these, uh, in these webinars. Yeah, I mean, that could be a Phoenix stock real soon. A Phoenix stock is a stock that, that drops and bottoms out and then uh, begins to rise from the ashes. Uh, Dick Fruth, I think, calls them tombstones, and, and he's written a book on, um, on those stocks. Uh, which is a worth read. I think you can get it on Amazon from um, Kindle. I think it's one of those less than $10 books. Definitely read his book. Um, parabolic stocks and growth trends. I, I was reorganizing my books a few days ago, and I saw it. I, I, I say reorganize. I put it back on the shelf. I have to put some floors in. So what did I do with that? I don't have it at my fingertips, but um, – uh, Dick, if you uh, Richard, he might be under Richard, his professional name, Richard Fruth, and it's uh, it's got the word parabolic in it, so you should be able to find it. Uh, you do have a little bit of overhead supply here to get through, but yeah, by all means, this could possibly be a stock to watch. And it has that 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 uh, decelerating bottom pattern. I don't want to call it three drives so low. I'm not a big fan of that particular pattern. Although I have seen stocks in in other markets do that, where they make a low. Make another low, make another low. It's kind of like a, a ball. If you throw a ball and it bounces, and then at each bounce, it, it tends to just kind of eventually, you know, bottom out, roll sideways, and then you look to get long afterwards. 
But yeah, if this thing could get a little bit higher above this prior little base in here and then form a bow tie, by all means, I think it might be a worthy setup. Computer went out. Did you get to run? Did you get to, did you get run stop? Yeah, I, I covered that in a lot of detail, uh, Joe. So just, just keep an eye out for the, um, for the recording on that. I don't want to, um, put everybody through that again. Um, I think the bottom line was that the trailing stop would probably be at least no, no higher, I should say, than 10. But yeah, I'll get the recording up literally as soon as, uh, as soon as we get done with this, I'll, I'll hit process and it'll be up within an hour. Uh, seeing this now, I can see it's kind of trying to break out to new highs, but um, it's kind of choppy and all over the place. It's also a little bit on the thin side. I think I, I think I'd leave that one alone. TSO is a short. Um, I can't cover that one because it's on the lander list. I didn't mean to say the actual name, but that should give you your answer right there. <laughs> Riggle. Uh, well, it's not coming off of major, major lows here. So, I mean, I'd be more excited, like right here was coming off of major, major lows. It's a little bit more exciting than right here. It's a little wide and loose. It's up, it's down, it's up, it's down. I mean, shorter term, at least, ledger quarter gram. I know it's kind of break it out now, but I think I would pass based on that. Look for something a little bit more cleaner. So, CFR, CFRX, CFRX. Well, Joe left again. Um, too thin and too much overhead supply. Did we talk about this one last week? It's just all over the place, kind of electrocardiogram. Yeah, let it shape up before uh, looking to do something there. TNX for Joe. Hey, Steve's here. TNX. Steve has an excellent album out. It's called Seconds from the Clock. And his last name is Kubasa. I hope I pronounced that. Kusaba. I'm sorry. Kubasa. <laughs> That's something totally different, isn't it? Uh, Kusaba. Hopefully I've said your name right. Let's take a look at CINF for Steve. He's our musician in a bunch. Steve, how did you get good at being a musician? Let me guess. You practice. How do you get good at being a chart reader? You practice. I find you artists make good traders for what it's worth because you can see things and believe in what you see, I guess. Yeah, this is kind of a stealthy setup. Um, it's not a big thrust lower. It only dropped a couple points. I guess the problem is the volatility is really low in this one. But I hear you, and I think it's in a lot of trouble. Um, it's just, it's probably not worth, I mean, as a short, it might be worth going after. I, I probably wouldn't buy a long, or buy a long, buy a stock that had an HV this low, because something bad could always happen. But I guess in this particular case, you're hoping for something bad to happen. Um, it looks okay, but it doesn't jump out at me. If, if this thrust was a little bit more impressive, lower, but you can see it is going to bow tie soon. PSX. PSX. Yeah, it looks good. Good job, Howard. This might be setup of the day. Uh, unfortunately, we got a problem. Okay. Too much support. Okay. But if you were just looking at this in a chart, you got a chart that's begun to drop fairly hard from major highs. It is a refiner, okay? So I think these refiners could be saying that oil is going to bottom out in here. Because doesn't it – does is it a um, – isn't oil like cost of goods sold when it comes to a refiner? They have to pay a lot more for the oil, so they don't necessarily – it's not like they're making more when they're refining it. They just have to pay a lot of money for it. So um, – just too much uh, support below the market. But, yeah, I hear you. It's got a thrust down, a little bit of a pullback. Could be in a lot of trouble. Susan says, uh, refiners, yes, have moved opposite from energy. Yeah, refiners so might be – refiners might be the way to uh, – if you want to short some energies, short the refiners, which is sort of equivalent of bottom fishing into the energies. And that might be – you know, write that down because I'm going to be gone for a couple of weeks from these shows. 
But that might be an interesting play in the oils is uh, look for shorting opportunities in the refiners. I wouldn't short the outright oils because I think that it's, it's too late for that. All right, Peter says uh, the name of Richard's book is Richard Fruth, Richard J. Fruth, Discovery of Growth Stocks and Anticipating Parabolic Moves. Okay, that's a, um, you know, it's a short little root, uh, book. You could read it in a sitting or two. Um, TNX for Joe. That's not coming up. And then Joe's left. Okay. All right, uh, MPC. We're almost out of time, so if anybody, anyone has any last stocks, uh, ask now for ever hold your peace. Uh, Susan, you got a lot of uh, you got a lot of overhead. I'm sorry, you got a, I, I want to always call it overhead supply. You got a lot of uh, support below the market. Uh, I hear you though. It is a refiner. They're all sort of look like that, aren't they? You got a sharp throw, slower pullback. You got a bow tie. I think it looks pretty good. I think it might be worth a swing trade, but you know me, I want to also position myself for longer term moves. And I think you'd find you'd find a lot of support between 40 and 45. DZZ for RJ. The only problem with that is it's going to be one of those uh, leverage things. That's what, uh, gas or something? Oh, it's gold. Um, if you're trading a leverage ETN or ETF, and, and some people say ETNs are, are questionable because they don't really exist. It's like a paper type of thing, I guess. Uh, if you're trading a double leverage, this is double in this case, you would have to trade half the share size. So unless you're day trading something like this, I would avoid any leveraged ETFs, okay? Uh, from a technical analyst analysis standpoint, I should say, yeah, it's making brand new highs, which which means gold's making new lows. So maybe on a pullback, but I would, uh, in general, avoid a leveraged ETF. MPC. Yeah, we talked about that one. That's another refiner. Um, AIG. Yeah, AIG is an insurance company. And it looks like Susan might be on to something. Um, I notice a lot of these insurance companies are rolling over. Now, this is your, uh, this is the aforementioned sort of second mouse signal, except that this would have to make new highs for that to be a second mouse. But you still get the idea, and it's still the, it's still in the spirit of the setup. You've got a bow tie here, and then now you have another bow tie here, and you're just shy of these all-time highs. So again, I think the lesson of today is that um, highs remain in place from bow ties or emerging trend patterns until our tops remain in place until the highs are taken out. So here's yet another example or a testament for that. Um, I think this might be worth a shot. It's 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 got some support down here. Uh, I would go through the other insurance companies and see if you find something that looks a little better. But I think you could do, you could probably do a lot worse than this. It's kind of that double top second mouse type of signal. That might be worth a shot. Susan says ETN have credit risk. Yeah, yeah, I agree with you on that. Uh, MPC. I recommended once for an institutional uh, thing that I was involved with, and it worked tremendously, but I got ripped a new ass for doing that. <laughs> so, and they were probably right. And, you know, the guy's like, ah, well, you picked up some nickels in front of that steamroller, you know, congratulations. Uh, anyway, that's another story. That's a, that's a, who was it said it a while back? Uh, what's his name? Wiz, the Buckley or whatever. He said, um, Buckley, I forget his last name. <laughs> That's a three drink minimum story. Um, yeah, we talked about this one, I think. It, it looks pretty good, but it's got a lot of support below the market. AWR for RJ. Did we talk about that one? AWR. Uh, yeah, it's just a little too too choppy and sideways. It's a utility. It's also pretty thin. Um, maybe if it breaks out to uh, new highs. If it does that and then I'll pull back, maybe it might be worthwhile. Okay, any uh, last minute ones? We're going to have to go ahead and uh, wrap them up. Happy holiday, Dave. Yeah, happy holiday to you too, Howard. I guess uh, I guess now's the time to get that out. Um, you know, thanks, thank you guys and girls for, for being here all year uh, for me. I appreciate that. I appreciate you uh, attending these, uh, these shows. And then uh, obviously to those who celebrate, Merry Christmas. Uh, to those who don't, enjoy your day off from the holiday. And it's still Christmas, so I hope that your Christmas day is a happy one. How's that? Uh, happy New Year. 
Uh, any questions you need, feel free to shoot me an email between now and then. I'll no shows, but I'll still be uh, on the screen and answering emails. So feel free to do that. Susan says, thank you. Learned a lot. You're welcome. Andre says, thanks. You're welcome. Jim says, thank you, Dave. See you next year. You're welcome. Happy New Year from Leon. Great webinar. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. Oh, wow. Thanks for all the uh, good. I'm not going to read them all now, but thank you so much. I appreciate this. All right. Well, let me go ahead and wrap things up so the recording doesn't get too long here. And I uh, hope to see all you guys early next year. Thank you so much. And girls.